there's a scene from The Matrix, which is, I mean, everybody knows, the greatest movie of all time, where Neo is meeting Morpheus for the first time, and he knows something's not right with the world, and he thinks Morpheus has the keys. And in this moment, Morpheus gives Neo a decision. He says, you know, you can take the blue pill, and you basically wake up and pretend this never happened, or you take the red pill, and you get to see how far this rabbit hole goes. Right now, I feel like the PT Cruiser is the Matrix, and I am Neo, who could have taken the blue pill and just never bought the PT Cruiser, but instead I took the red pill, and the rabbit hole is deep, and I'm not sure I should have ever gone down it. <sighs> Look, the PT is apart again, but um, this is this is actually the point where we're getting to, I guess, some of the fun stuff of we're putting new speakers in because this came with the world's worst sounding stereo. This this should this this should be the fun part. And the truth is, I've been having a lot of fun with the PT Cruiser in general. It's just that it's taken me maybe a little bit more time and certainly more money than I had um, well originally planned. Um. Now, certainly the intention of the PTGT was to be a project car, to have stuff to do and things to work on and to be a learning experience. I just don't know that it was meant to be this much of a learning experience, but it was one of those things that as I started to jump in and do things, I found out that it needed more things to be done. Like I thought there was a clunking in the suspension, which I had figured out was this one little watts link thing at the back and then when i replaced that it was too rusty and so i had to replace the two arms and then when i kind of fixed that clunk then i heard more clunking in the front end so we did uh, new control arms we did new um, uh, struts and it was very rusty and so bolts broke and we had to drill out the floor to get to a nut to be able to to change the nut and we did new stabilizer links and kind of redid the whole the whole front suspension and I actually really enjoyed it because I wasn't in a rush. I didn't, I didn't need this car to drive every day. I could just kind of work on it. And I did lots of things that I, that I hadn't done before. And, and I only had to call my dad once to, to come and help me, which is, is a big accomplishment for me. I, I did most of all of that myself and some engine stuff, valve cover gaskets, spark plugs, change the oil, change the cologne. I think I mentioned that before, but then I noticed after I'd fixed the front suspension that, um, well, the back was sagging. One side was sagging a little lower than the other ones. And so in the back, I, I ended up doing new shocks and, um, you know, all, all this stuff. It just, it adds up. And I have a spreadsheet that I am tallying where it's like $2,200 for the vehicle. But, um, you know, I could be in another two grand and all this other stuff, which thank goodness I didn't have to take it to a shop to get them to do it. I'm, I'm sure they would maybe do better work, but um, that would have been way more money. But you know, I got all that stuff fixed up and, and the, the car handles well, and it, it drives really nicely now. Um, but I, I've, spent, I've spent basically my budget fixing the ride and now I still don't have working air conditioning. I still have a bunch of lights on, which I actually took it to a proper shop and they diagnosed it and told me, oh yes, your computer's broken. $600 to rebuild the computer. You're like, yeah. But then like, oh, you can't just rebuild the computer. You have to replace the whole engine harness at the same time or else that corroded engine harness could end up blowing a new computer. And that engine harness could be like 13 or $1,400. So I'm at like $2,000. Now my buddy Russell from the last video said, you might actually be able to get away with cleaning your old harness, but you have to remove every pin and it's like a six or seven hour job. And the thing is the vehicle actually runs and drives fine. So, so maybe, I, maybe I won't do that, but I don't really have money for the computer anyway. And, and I've just kind of settled to, the car is what the car is. Truth is, I've had a lot of moments where 
I'll fix something and then find out something else wrong, try and fix that, and then that doesn't fix it, and just kind of keep going, keep going. And the disillusionment of what was supposed to be a joy ride sets in. I'm talking to camera. <laughs> Ah, and it's these these painful moments where I just kind of think, was this a gigantic mistake? Was this a waste of time? Was this a waste of money? Was I too ambitious? Was ah, this all for nothing? Um, maybe that happens with a lot of things in life and a lot of projects. But the one saving grace with this vehicle is every time I get in it and I drive it, it is an absolute riot. It's hilarious. Now, I wouldn't describe this vehicle as beautiful. It looks a bit ridiculous. But when you couple the ridiculousness of how it looks with how hilarious it is when you crank on it, light up the front tires, and just smoke somebody off the line, not racing, just going quickly, and the turbo kicks in after lagging for a while, and you're ripping around going, I'm in a PT Cruiser. That is just the absolute best feeling in the world. And for that reason, I have no regrets at all. None, zero, none. But I still have a little ways to go. Okay, so vehicle's not perfect, but <laughs> It has a lot going for it. Engine is great. It's super fun. It's got that old school turbo feel, which you know what that is. You put your foot down, you wait and wait and wait and wait and wait, and then the turbo kicks in and you go fast and just uh, it feels, it's fun. It's fun and sounds a bit angry. Suspension is good. No more clunks and, and rattles and, and it, it handles well and you know that all that stuff is safe and, and good to go. And yeah, it's got a few lights on, but it, so what? Air conditioning we still need to get to because today is hot and I'm thankful that I'm in the shade. So we're gonna fix that up. And the thing that I'm working on right now is, is making this, this stereo sound good, which if I haven't showed you this yet, I've got CDs. Ta-da! Cause this only plays CDs. So I had to go digging through bins in my house to find old CDs to put in here. But when I would put the CDs on, the sound that was coming out of the speakers was the worst noise I've ever heard in my life because the, the factory old paper speakers were just atrocious, which it feels like Chrysler Dodge did this in the 2000s. They just put like just the worst, the worst sounding things, which our van back here, 2015, still and it sounds actually quite good. Brother-in-law's van bought a 2008 Dodge, very similar, atrocious, like, like so bad. Anyway, I had gone to see my buddy Jay at Customize Audio here in Regina, and he has a fantastic shop, and he's so good at counseling you out of the things you don't need and putting you onto what you actually really want. Anyway, I'd gone and talked with him and planned to do this whole big video where I'd come in, I'd get a new stereo, and we'd pick out new speakers, and maybe get a little sub, and a whole new dash kit, and maybe a, a new stereo with CarPlay up here, and Bluetooth, and all these things, but um, then I spent all my money fixing other things. And so, I'm just starting with the basics. I found these speakers, for they're normally like $300 for under 100 bucks new, and I put the, there's a new tweeter in here, but I actually cut out the old one, and. Stuck it in there. Oh my goodness, it's falling out. Hmm. I had attempted to hot glue this in here, thinking I was being all smart reusing the brackets, but um, no, it didn't work. Anyway, they got a really good deal on speakers, and I thought, you know what, all I can do for now is just buy some speakers and I'll upgrade the speakers and it'll sound better. And so I spent all the time getting hooked up last night and then I listened to the sound and I went, oh, the, I mean, it's much clearer on the top end, but these speakers require way more power than what this thing can put out here. And they actually sounded terrible. Well, like, like no, no bass. But you want the bass and I can't have the subs and I want the bass. 
So now I need to find like an amp and wire in an amp to be able to have the speakers sound good. And it's just like everything's a rabbit hole. And now I need to apparently find a better solution than this because I think the uh, 30 degree heat melted the hot glue or it didn't stick to get, I don't know. Anyway, this is like, this is this car. It's just everything you do just turns into more, which again, isn't necessarily a bad thing because I like having projects and I like having things to work on. I just also like being done them so I can enjoy them. But when I actually finish them and get done them and enjoy them, I enjoy them for like five minutes before I want the next project to go on. And I've been really, really good at, well, at this. That was a useless transition. I just wanted to change up the angle because I feel like you're all getting bored of me talking for so long in this episode. But I've been really good at slowing down and just enjoying the process of everything that I'm doing. There'd be other times where I'd be like super frustrated if something wasn't going well and I had to drill out the floor to get it a nut and if anything was taking longer because I just wanted to be done so bad. But yeah, I've, part of why I haven't been doing many updated videos on this is because I just really enjoyed working on it. And making videos kind of takes away a little bit from the process of doing that, so. Anyway, that's a update on the PT Cruiser. It's still a work in progress. It's not done. It's frustrating, but I also love it and I enjoy it. So for that reason, I'm, I'm still okay with calling this series Joyride. And when I get those tunes pumping and I have to burn CDs. That's what I have to do to put music in here. But I'm on like Apple Music and you can't burn CDs from Apple Music anymore. It has to be in your library. Plus, I don't own a CD burner anymore. Who owns a CD burner? I haven't had a laptop with a CD burner in it for a long time. I don't even know when. I'm gonna have to buy a CD burner. More money just to burn CDs. Ugh. Joyride.